humans. In that case, that blurs the line between free will and no free will even further. It's almost like science fiction, right? It's mind control. Well, 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 like, like a lot, a lot of this me- me- ment- mental stuff, you know, because like, say you have, I've, I, like an addiction to candy. Uh, uh, admittingly, admittingly, I, I have one. Yeah, I, I have one every time Halloween comes, but it's like one thing, eat candy, like that, that nudge in your head that goes, must eat candy, must eat candy, and any other thought that goes aside is, is sort of like cast away, you know, it, 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 can, it's, a, it's a form of can, willpower can, to, to, to resist candy. Okay. I yeah, hate I, candy, but I like chocolate. What'd you say? I hate candy, but I like to eat chocolate. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, Annie, Annie says in the chat, this experiment perhaps explains why that we are unconscious of what we do. We might think that we are in control, but in reality, maybe we are controlled by something unknown. That's definitely an implication. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people would say that, would disagree with that. But if but we're being even, controlled by an unknown thing, they wouldn't want us to know about them, so they wouldn't let you say it. That could be true, too. Or maybe also, maybe also, if we we were controlled by something, they probably wouldn't let us do autopsies and stuff. Yeah, or like and also study silent science. Um. Also, like maybe we're not controlled by something unknown, but maybe there's a possibility that we're manipulated, and maybe that we're not controlled by something that's a creature, but maybe we're controlled by just the outside environment. That's also possible. Or maybe we live in a simulation. Well, there's always these a lot of maybes, and some are more like, some are more unlikely than others, I guess. But the point of this experiment was not to bring up a whole rabbit hole of maybes, but the point of showing this was just to show that it's possible that we're being manipulated by the outside environment without us knowing. Okay, since we're short on time, I'm gonna get to the third one. Um, in my opinion, this is the most interesting one. So there's this Minnesota study of twins reared apart, and it studied twins that were raised in significantly different environments. The researchers found that the identical twins reared apart resembled each other very closely. There's the Giggle sisters. They, always, they almost always laughed all the time. They both constantly pushed their nose, which they call, both called um, squidging. Both have weak ankles because they fell when they were 15. Both met their husbands at dances when they were 16. And both worked as polling clerks. And remember that both of these are twins, but they were raised apart. There's Jim and Jim, who drove the same model car, smoked the same brand of cigarettes. Both had elaborate workshops at home, where they made mini furniture. Both liked to leave little love, love notes for their wives, lying around the house. And both named their sons James Allen and James Allen. There's Jack Youth and Oscar Stoher, whose home environments were exceedingly different. One twin was raised in Trinidad by his Jewish father, the other in Germany by its Nazi grandmother. Oscar was in the Hitler Youth, while Jack served in the Israeli Navy. When reunited, both were wearing rectangular wireframe glasses and blue two-pocket shirts with epaulets. I don't know what that is, but epaulets? Uh, both had small mustaches. Both liked to read magazines from back to front, and both flushed toilets before using them. Also, both men liked the same practical joke of startling people by sneezing in elevators. I find that last part really funny, because... But just... nowadays it isn't. Nowadays it's definitely not a funny joke. <laughs> um, you know, just saying that makes it funny, right? Hmm? Oh, well, def- probably wouldn't be funny given the situation right now. Um, but the, p- the point is, maybe all of these are coincidences, but, and I don't think that they have enough data to show that they're not coincidences, but it's just interesting to see these case studies that are sh- have shown that maybe both Youth and Stoher thought that they were making the decisions by themselves. Maybe they both thought they came up with the funny joke of sneezing in an elevator to scare people. But they both do the same thing. And they also both do all of these other different same things. So do they really exercise free will? Or is it in their genetics? Yeah, probably because their minds work the same way. So they think the same same thoughts. Exactly. So So yeah. So you could have one free will, one person exercising his free will, and the other exercising his free will, but uh, they're all they all want to do the same thing, so they so they do the same things. 
Oh yeah, are people scared by um like by like someone sneezing and down. Well so I forgot who said that, but someone said that it's possible that they both exercised the free will and did the same thing. That's one of the most popular, defi- or not popular, one of the most prevalent definitions um, from people who do believe in free will. So the, the, the libertarians in this argument. Um, so yeah, I guess you have a valid point. It's possible that they didn't have a choice, but it's still free will. Garrett says, I think that it is free will as they didn't purposefully follow each other and did what they wanted to do. Okay, so actually this is the definition of free will that I actually forgot to cover. The third definition was free will is when you do something you wanna do. It doesn't matter why you wanna do it. It doesn't matter if there's outside factors that cause you to wanna do it. Just as long as it's something that you wanna do, it's free will. And that's an argument that can be applied very relevantly to this discussion, to this separated twins experiment. So what does everyone think about that definition? That's, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, not bad, honestly. But I, but is, is there, is it possible that like, that like, since they're twins and stuff, that won't they have inherited like, like, aren't there like, aren't they like brain stuff a, a bit, a bit like the same? Because like, because like, I, I, I live my, I live in a neighborhood with two with a, a set of twins and and they like playing the same sports so that that's interesting well okay. think about it twins are going to have somewhat of a similar brain because their parents are the same yeah yeah and and, and they were made of this and they came from the same cell you know yeah. and, and they came from the same uh thing they, they came from the same uh you know Actually, I don't know. There are some. It just came from the same uh, egg that split, and so so they're they're basically made from the same block. Okay, and also to add to this discussion, um, a lot of people said agreed with that definition about free will is something that you want to do. Um, Isabel says it's less existential crisisy, which is I find that funny, but probably true. Um, However, there's a key problem with this definition. Like, let me ask you this. Let's say that you were, I injected some chemical into your brain and the chemical makes you really crave eggs. And then you come out and every day you get an egg and you think it's your free will. But in reality, you really have no other choice because I injected a chemical into your brain. So now who thinks that's still free will? Because that just seems, I mean, who thinks that's still free will? Wait, it's the free, it's the will of the brain plus plus chemicals, but not but it's not the will of the brain alone. So, do you think it's free will then? Technically, you will, but not free. Okay. Technically, you made him have the will of eating an egg. Yeah. So you may, so there's definitely will, but. What, like, what is free will? Once again, like, how do we know if it's free? Like, who has to be making the decision? Is it, does your brain have to make a decision? Do you have to make a decision? And if, if you Did think you, you have to make a decision... Did you consent being ejected? Did you consent? Let's say no. Because another yeah, question... That's a, that's a, that's a anti-vaxxer logic. <laughs> okay, well, another thing is, to those of you who might say, well, in that case, your brain is making the decision, but you have to make the decision. Well, my question is, What's the difference between your brain and you? Like, do you have a soul? If so, does your soul have to make the decision? Where does the soul reside? And questions like that. So definitely a very nuanced debate. Uh, let me read the chat. So Josuk says, it is not free will. The brain is under the influence of a substance that physically changes it. Okay. So if you think it's not free will, then that definition of free will kind of falls on its face, right? Because now we think that it's not something that's, um, as long as you want it, then it's free will. And he says, even if it makes us happy, it does not mean we are completely in control. So yeah, exactly. Um, Henry says it's not free will, but you think it is. That's fair. And he says, if we think that being skinny makes us happy, 
than it is because environment and society told us it is what is good and should make us happy. So, if you want to be fat, is it because society told you? Well, maybe if you wanted to be fat, then maybe your some something in your genes no. like, programmed you to be like. Can we move like, on? Because this is a society. Is, you you can be fat, but like society injects into your brain what it's like to be fat. So but society defines what fat is and what skinny is. So like so like hey, I want to be fat, and so and you go fat. You're basically uh, um so you're. you're you're um, adhering to society's definition of fat. Because I, I could be super skinny and I'd call myself fat, you know? That, that's a valid point. There's definitely more nuance to it than just following society. But we're going to move on since we only have three minutes left. Maybe we're going to go over time a bit. But the fourth one is actually quantum mechanics. So before I talked about how like maybe A leads to B leads to C, like Big Bang leads to... I don't know, formation of like some star or something, and then it leads to formation of Earth, leads to like development of maybe bacteria, leads to development of human, leads to development of me, leads to me eating a chocolate. But quantum mechanics says that these laws that govern the behavior of matter are actually probabilistic. It's not, it's not given X, Y must follow. Instead, it's given X, there's a specific probability that Y will follow. For example, let's say that there's a radioactive substance that's decaying. The laws of nature might tell us that a certain percentage of the atoms are likely to decay in the next month. However, the injection, no, sorry, the laws will not tell us exactly which atoms will decay. That's left undetermined. That's left up to chance. So maybe it's not A leads to B, A leads to C. So who thinks that this argument actually disproves the determinist argument of A leads to B leads to C, etc.? Anthony? Quantum mechanics is always right. I do. You disagree? I think that, um, I think that one way or another, quantum mecha- quantum mechanic mechanics are are are, are in you know in a sense true because in, in, in at the end of the day you know you you cannot at the end of the day at the end of the day the society um, makes up these ideas and at the at the end at the end of the day they like you you know how like back in the day they thought they thought like the earth was why well, you're recording the universe right. But then, like they, they they built upon that, and then realized there's the sun's at the center of the universe. So they had to rewrite their entire system, you know. Okay. Okay. So the actually interesting thing about this is it's true that a lot of people immediately. I mean, this is also my immediate reaction, which is, wow, we finally disproved determinism, and we proved free will. But I wouldn't say that's actually true. Quantum mechanics is. Obviously, it's, this is an oversimplification. Is it, go ahead. Did you say? It's just the opposite of free will. It, it's it's even less free than determinism if you think about it in a way. That's kind of what I was gonna say. Quantum mechanics is like random. Like if you went on the street and you did random actions because suddenly like a radioactive substance starts to decay and then cause a chain reaction and cause like a neuron firing and, and you do, do something random, is that free will? Like I wouldn't say so. So maybe quantum mechanics doesn't. Prove free will. Well, yeah, maybe quantum, maybe maybe quantum mechanics had some complex interaction that slowly leads up to to macroscopic something th- things which which might determine free will. Hmm. Well, but quantum mechanics is random, and most people think that free will isn't random. So, what exactly do you mean by that? Like quantum mechanics c- could lead to lead to more macroscopic things, which ultra- which ultimately make up destiny. I guess. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, but the problem with that is that, in that case, what do you mean by destiny? Because quantum mechanics is, you can't I mean, the behavior. So. I mean, it just leads up to macroscopic stuff in general because because this is and this is breaking my brain right now. <laughs> Well, it's Next. definitely a complicated argument. Okay, Annie says, okay, so this is about the previous point about being fat and society. Um, the environment affects how we think and all these ideas. Or maybe we were controlled to think that the environment is what affects us. Either way, it's not free will. Okay. Okay. So, sorry we didn't get to st- spend a lot of time that um, on these two. But let me actually move on to the implications of the free will debate, since we're actually a minute over time. You can feel free to leave if you have something to do, but I'll try to finish this. 
So let's say that the year is like 3,000 and we've accepted that there's no free will. Roma. There's going to be a lot of huge implications on society. For example, I'm going to give one example. How can we deal with the concept of criminal justice? How can we label someone a criminal if they were like destined to do that? How can we put someone in jail and punish them? Or maybe, maybe we were predestined to do that. Or maybe if we stopped, maybe we we're predestined to do that too. In that case, should we even try? Maybe we were predestined to stop trying. Or like, there's some huge implications on society. So, what do you guys think are some of the most important? Ah! Yeah, exactly. It's it's very scream inducing. <laughs> Maybe not that kind of scream, but <laughs> I like the first scream more, slightly. <laughs> so he says, well, maybe we are also trying to convince ourselves that destiny exists just like free will. Maybe that's true. Um, and you can definitely make that argument now, but there is a possibility that like hundreds of years later, science has proven that free will doesn't exist or something like that. So, I guess maybe. What are some other huge implications? And he says, but if we are convincing ourselves, there is the environment that affects us to think that destiny exists. That is not free will. Yeah, exactly. Um, maybe, like, you might think that we're trying to convince ourselves, but maybe we were destined to try to convince ourselves. And so, I guess that's the problem with, this is a central problem with all metaphysical, almost all metaphysical questions. The problem being, it's impossible to resolve. Um, because there's too many what ifs, too many layers to this that makes it much harder to answer than an ethical question, or uh, I mean a question in ethics, or maybe a question in political science, or I mean um, political philosophy. So maybe that's also what makes, in my opinion, that's what makes metaphysics interesting too. Isabel says, I think that for physical factors, making someone commit a crime would be more justifiable than someone's upbringing or nurture. Um, I found this this thing called Laplace's demon, and like it's this thing about metaphysics. Like, if there was a creature that could know the position, momentum of all atoms in the universe, then could it predict the future? Yeah, I've definitely um, learned about that too. Um, could it? I mean, we don't know. It's it's a very interesting thought experiment. And if it could, then does that disprove your will? Maybe. We're not going to discuss that too deeply because. We're running out of time, but maybe we could bring that up later or in the next meeting. All right. So he says, so if there's free will, there's no destiny. And if there's destiny, there's no free will? Well, not necessarily. Maybe, maybe that's not true. Maybe it's possible to have free will and also to have destiny. That's what compatibilism is. Like if free will is just doing what you want and you're destined to do what you want, then that satisfies both Criterion, it's both free will and destiny. Free will is influenced by destiny? Okay, I guess that's a valid interpretation. Um, okay. Um, so we're over time by five minutes. This was, actually no, there's one more slide, really quickly. Um, homework plus updates. Just a quick announcement. Before we were mostly relying on WeChat group, but as you probably, as you probably saw from my email, we're trying to move towards email because I received a lot of uh, messages from parents and students saying that WeChat wasn't so convenient. So we're going to be moving towards email. And if you're not getting the emails, please let my mom know on WeChat or let me know um, and give us the email so that we can add you to the email list. I'll send the homework shortly, hopefully tonight. Um, maybe tomorrow, but hopefully tonight. Okay, thanks. I got that email to the person who messaged to me. Is the, ho is, is the homework required? It's not required, but it's interesting and um, it's recommended. And also, I sometimes feature some of your homeworks in our newsletter, um, which is on the website, and it's also being distributed by the Mitchell Park Library. So I guess, yeah, it's, you can do it. Wait, it's like, not completely required, but it's good. Will, will there still be new, will there be a different, a different meeting link every time? Or is it? Yeah. Oh, and you're going to, you're going to still send it in WeChat, right? I'm going to send it in both. Oh, okay. Okay then. Goodbye. Bye everyone.
hold on, I'm recording all these emails. Have a good night. Good night to all. Bye. Good night. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming. Yeah, this is really fun. Thank you, everyone, for coming again. Um, oh, wow. A lot of you don't get the emails. OK. I guess the email list was very, very incomplete. Bye. Okay, um, I'm about to end the meeting then. Um, see everyone next week and I'll send the homework soon. Goodbye.